Guys, it's going to be interesting. We're going to be talking about a lot of chaos that Disney itself is under. But first, we are going to be talking about another property they bought for $4 billion, and that is Marvel. Um, it is not looking well. You know, if you've heard, you probably know Variety released a pretty inside article. But, you know, it wasn't really giving us anything that we didn't know too much about already. But a big thing I want to cover that Variety showed in that article is Kang Dynasty. And what does the future of all of that look? Obviously, Jonathan Majors is playing Kang. He's going under some legal troubles right now. So if they choose to move away from him, are they going to move away from the character entirely? Or are they going to recast? I mean, you know, Kang really hasn't been performing well. You know, at this point, I feel like Thanos, you know, before Infinity War and Endgame, he was built up already as the big bad, and we knew why we as the audience should be afraid of him. Right now with Kang, we have been given, you know, two seasons of TV in Loki, one movie featuring him as the main big bad, Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. Yeah, that was not a good movie, but also he was beaten by ants, and then he was beaten by Ant-Man of all Avengers. So why are we supposed to be afraid of him? Why is he supposed to be the big threat? You know, I just don't really think that they have given us a, a, a really main reason and what are his powers exactly. And yeah, he controls time, but what does he ultimately want to do with it? You know, I just don't feel like they've written this character well, and really they haven't written the fear that we should really be expressing in Kang. So CJ, what are your thoughts about this? And w where do you think they are going to go if they do continue with Kang? Uh, and then, and you know, what have been your thoughts on the powers and the supposed terror that he uh, creates? Yeah, I think, you know, in in this whole sort of conversation, I think it, it's you really have to look at what did Marvel do really well in phase one, phase two, phase three of the MCU mm -hmm. at the beginning. What they did was they had um, different characters and they had different villains uh, and different, you know, MacGuffins, the Infinity Stones right. kind of throughout all of these things that all coalesced into a very unique story. Uh, with Thanos as sort of the main bad guy and culminated all of these different characters and different villains and different things that meant things to different people like Allspark, uh, you know, the, the whatever the red stuff was, the ether, mm -hmm. um, you know, Loki's, you know, that weird staff thing, uh, yeah. you know, all these things. And they, they all kind of, they, we all sort of knew them uh, uh, from the movies, the standalone movies on their own, the Mind Stone, uh, you know, mm -hmm. all these things from the movies themselves. And then they, they, put all those into the, if they all come together, all of these tools and these kind of MacGuffins that everyone's familiar with, if they all come together, then they can create this super weapon that then this big bad can use and leverage against everybody. Um, and you don't really see that with Kang right now. You just see this guy's bad and he could be as bad as Thanos um, mm -hmm. and he could be worse than Thanos or something. And it's yep. like, uh, great, why? You know, uh, well, mm -hmm. why is that? Um, why should I care? Um, why should I? So they're really, it, it, and it's really amazing to see this coming from Marvel in terms of they know what to do well. Um, they know exactly how to build up things. They know exactly how to write a story that is, um, you know, uh, 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 logical and coherent. Right. But, and I get not wanting to just rehash and do basically the same exact formula, uh, you know, over the course of, you know, decades and decades. I understand mm -hmm. that. It's like, okay, let's do something new. Let's try something different. Yeah. But you have to do it better and you're not taking the best aspects of what you did well and, and, and implementing them in a new way. You're just throwing everything out and saying, let's just do something uh, because we already have brand loyalty. We already have people on our side, no matter what we do, it's going to end up great. Um, yeah. It's, it feels really arrogant and it feels um, like just kind of shutting off all of the creativity and all the new things that you did um, back in the day that made you so successful. For sure. Yeah, no, I, I agree 100% on that. And I, I get what you're saying, too. You don't want to do a cookie cutter, you know, cut out of just do what you did with Thanos, copy, paste, do it to Kang. They also just don't have the time, I don't think, to do, you know, 23 movies as a build up to it, the next, you know, big major Avengers films. Uh, do you, Now, a lot of people have been speculating, myself included, that if they do move away from Kang, the next kind of big bad would be Doctor Doom. And I think that's a very reasonable assumption because, you know, they did just finally get Fox, you know, back. They got the Fantastic Four, got X-Men. And I think it'd be cool to kind of go that route of Doctor Doom. But then again, you know, you have the Avengers films coming out 2026, 2027, and we haven't even been introduced to Victor Von Doom yet. 
So you would really have to rush him through, maybe get him in some post credit scenes. So we get a little bit of a tease with him until we get to the Fantastic Four film itself, mm -hmm. which I don't think he is going to be the big bad in that one. I think he's just going to be a little bit of a tease at the end. Um, I don't think they would want to waste him that soon. But we also have to, you know, before we find out the big bad, we have to have time to get introduced to this character. So do you agree that if they do go the Victor Von Doom route, they have to start putting him in maybe some post credit scenes for, you know, Captain America 4 is doing some reshoots now because that's got pushed back a year. You know, do they have to get him in there? Do they have to get him in Thunderbolts? Like, do you agree that they kind of have to get him in where they can? So if they do go that route, we can start getting a sense of this character until we see him at the end of Fantastic Four and so forth and so on. You know, I really don't like um, this question, uh, this line of questioning, because it, it points out an issue. Uh, it's nothing with you. It, it, it point What you're mm -hmm. getting at is you're pointing out an issue that is kind of at the root of not only Marvel, but I think a lot of Hollywood. And what I mean by that is these studios, uh, executives, whoever, will set a release date for a film. They'll have a big blockbuster yep. tent pole film. Say this film is going to come out of May of 2026. Just we'll use this example. May of mm -hmm. 2026. And we have, we have to make that release date. We're going right. to make that release date. We have to stake it out years in advance. And we're going to make a movie and it's got to be on schedule. It's got to, it's got to hit all the things that we needed to hit. We have to, we have to put all of these things in place in order to get. And the thing about an MCU film in particular is these, 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 these films are episodic now. They're no longer right. standalone yep. stories anymore, which I think really hurts them. They're no longer standalone stories anymore. They're, they're episodes in a show. And these episodes just happen to be like two and a half hours long and they just happen to be coming out in the theaters. So mm -hmm. it's like episodic now. And so we have to put in our episodes in such an order that it all makes sense by May of 2026 or else the whole thing falls to pieces. Whereas the old school way of making movies and how a lot of independent films are made and how a lot of other films are made and even how the MCU movies were made initially in phase one and all these other ones was that let's make a movie. Um, it's going to be about this. It's going to be about this. Let's write the script. Let's tighten it up really great. Let's sell it to a studio. Say, hey, we have this great idea for a film. And they say, okay, great. Go make the movie. They give us funding. We hire the crew. We hire the actors. We make the movie. We edit it up. We do some reshoots if we need to. We have a finished film. And then when we get close to the end of finishing the film, we then put in a release date to say, this would be a good time for this film to come out. Then we release the movie and it all works together. We don't plant a release date 12 years in the future or something and say, this has to happen or else everything falls to pieces and you have to do it in pressure cooker and get all these creatives together and make a rewrite, a reshoot, redo, redo the all fast rush special. Th it's just a broken system. And I think Marvel really needs to take a step back and Hollywood, I think in a lot of ways, but Marvel in this yep. example has to take a step back and mm -hmm. say, well, let's make movies that are good, that are well-made, that the story is tight and we'll plan out a strategy. We don't have to say what that strategy is just to get people hyped and get the internet talking and get all these right. things going, but we can have a broad plan. And if things uh, don't go well, things don't make the schedule, we can pivot, we can change. But we will not say that these movies are coming out until we know that we're confident in the story and that we're confident um, that they'll make their release date on time. And sometimes okay. that doesn't happen until well into production. So I think it's yeah. kind of a disappointing situation um, that because then when stuff like this happens, when maybe an actor is in some trouble or whatever, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, uh, you know, someone passes away like Chadwick Boseman, you know, bad yeah. stuff happens. And so then you need to change your strategy and you're just you're not able to do that. So uh, I think, I think, it, I think you're highlighting a, a really important problem uh, in the industry right now. Yeah. I mean, I get what you're saying. I, I do know though that like, you know, studios, they, they hate to change release dates. You know, we've seen it with COVID. It is a killer and you don't know exactly if you are guaranteed that spot, which is why I think so many movies do, um, you know, put their uh, release date out in advance. Although I do see the plus uh, side of doing it your way that you suggested as well. I definitely understand why you think that Hollywood needs to kind of change its system. I'm not necessarily against that. Um, I just also know it's hard to get that on the book competing with all these other studio temple films. So they always want to make sure that they get the best, you know, release date to guarantee the most money because ultimately it is a business at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, that's very interesting. I mean, I don't know if I could see 
if they keep on having to go back to the drawing board with Victor Von Doom here, if they do go that route, I can almost see this movie maybe even have having to get pushed even further and not being able to make that May 20. I think, I think actually it is May, 2026, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Um, But maybe it wouldn't be the bad, a bad thing because right now what Marvel is doing as of now, uh, next year in 2024, the only movie being released is Deadpool three. And I think for a lot of people, including me, I love the MCU, but I think that's going to be a great like cleanser to this superhero kind of chaos mess because, you know, DC is not in a great stance either. But like, stop shoving it down our throats for a year. I think that will give everybody a break. Okay, Deadpool 3, I, we know it's going to be great. I mean, Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman together, it's going to be fantastic. And that's where a lot of the mutants and X-Men are going to be coming into the MCU. So I think that film's going to be really, really good. And yeah, there's TV shows on Disney Plus. I believe there's three that are coming out, maybe four that are coming out next year. But, you know, th- those aren't movies. So I, I, it's different. So I do think that it's going to be a nice palate cleanser when we come back in 2025. I do believe that that's when Marvel is going to be kind of being able to right the ship, get back on track and do the quality over quantity. Because right now that's where their huge confusion and mess has been. And hopefully they get that cleaned up. So yeah, uh, guys, let us know your thoughts on this down below. What did you think of the Variety article? What do you kind of think of the state that the MCU is in? And uh, yeah, uh, let us know your thoughts on that.